a nurse Amy, also known as Amy Alton ARNP, which stands for Advanced Registered Nurse Practitioner. I'm also a certified nurse midwife, and I'm the co-author of articles of doomandbloom.net and the Survival Medicine Handbook, a number one Amazon bestseller. But today we're going to talk about one of my latest kits. I designed this. It took a couple of years. I wanted to figure out exactly what to put into this bag. Now, although I call this my gunshot kit, it really is for any kind of wound, whether it stays inside of you or it goes all the way through. So it's both gunshot and knife wounds. Now, the important thing about this is it's easy and it's portable. You can throw this into any backpack, your gun range bag, you can throw it into your car if you're going hiking or camping. It's very lightweight. It has attachments here. It has Molly. These zippers are amazing. And let me tell you, I put a lot of stuff into this bag and these have tolerated opening and shutting numerous, numerous times. So this is a Voodoo Tactical bag. And like I said, it is really, really durable. But let's talk about what is in this kit. You have two zippers on top and I have opened these up already, but you'll see they are from the top so they will slide down. This kit will open up, but it won't open up to let everything fall out. It has two elastic bands that will keep it together so the contents are kept organized inside the bag until you're ready to take them out. Now, starting with the outside, we have instruments. We have a bandage scissors, which is awesome for cutting off the clothing. When you need to see a wound, the last thing you need is material in your way. So you can cut off jeans. It has a safety blunted edge right here so that you can go underneath jeans or shirts and not actually puncture the, wound, the uh, patient. Very important. The other outside instrument that you see is actually a curved hemostat. Now, curved hemostats are great if you can observe where the patient is bleeding from. You can see the artery or the vessel. You can open these up and actually clamp that off. Generally speaking, they're going to be on the side of the wound that's closest to the heart because remember the heart is pumping the blood away and possibly out of the wound. So you're going to be looking in that area closest to the heart for those vessels. So if you can get a hold of that vessel. I'm going to actually stop bleeding. Awesome. The first thing that you're going to see on the inside is a pair of gloves. Now, there's two pairs of gloves actually, and they're both venom nitrile. I just wanted to show you the box here. They, of course, are powder free. They are non-allergenic, hypoallergenic. They don't have latex. Very important because there's a lot of people with latex allergies. So. You're going to be grabbing those gloves out ASAP. That's the first thing you want to put on. The second thing if you want to put on for personal protection, and it depends on how comfortable you feel with who you're taking care of, is a face mask. This has a metal area. You can bend that to your nose, put the ear, lo ear loops around your ears, and you can actually protect your nose and mouth. These are not for Ebola. But if anything's going to be splattering, it won't get into your nose and mouth. And if you are at a gun range, it's possible that you have some goggles. You may want to slap those on also. Um, you know, we want to protect yourself. So you have your gloves. Underneath your gloves are alcohol and betadine wipes. Now the alcohol you can use to clean up your scissors. You can use to clean your hemostats before you use them. So you have both uh, alcohol and betadine. The betadine is uh, great if you're finished when the bleeding has stopped and you really want to put a dressing on it. You can use the betadine. Drop one of these in eight ounces of water, potable water, anything you can drink. You can use this. Shake it up, mix it up makes a great cleaning uh, solution. You don't have to use betadine in the potable water, but it's not a bad idea. Underneath um, the gloves in the second area is a Mylar blanket. Now you might ask yourself why a Mylar blanket? This is awesome to keep the patient warm and also to help prevent shock. Somebody who's losing blood or something traumatic has happened, they're going to 
go into shock. They're going to be disoriented. They're going to be confused. And this can help prevent that shock situation. So a Mylar blanket, I feel, is a very important part of this kit. Uh, now next to the Mylar blanket are two ammonia inhalants. Again, why ammonia inhalants? If you come upon somebody who is passed out on the ground or, or just on a trail and there's no obvious injury, you might want to try to wake them up with these ammonia inhalants. Very simple. You pop them. There is a horrible stench that emits from these little ampules. And you, what you would do is just quickly whiff it underneath the patient's nose. Maybe they'll wake up. Obviously, this is for someone who's breathing. If you come upon somebody who's not breathing, you're going to be doing CPR. And that's what the CPR mask is good for. Now, people who are trained in CPR can use the mask. If you're not trained in CPR, but you understand chest compressions, that's okay. That's actually the new recommendations is at least do the chest compressions. If you have two people or you do understand the concept of CPR, you can use the mask to help protect yourself from getting any bodily fluids exchanged. Also on the outside, you're going to see a red marker. When you open up your kit, this is loosely within, you can choose to fill out, after you have finished taking care of the patient, what actually happened. Where's the inner, when, where was the injury? What were the vital signs? What did you do to the patient? Did you put on a tourniquet? What actually did you perform? This can attach to the patient with a bracelet right here. If for some reason you don't have time to use this and you are using the tourniquet, go ahead and take the red marker, put a T right there on the forehead. This is going to alert people that you have applied a tourniquet. So we'll get to that part in a second. Um, underneath the Marlar blanket and the ammonia inhalants was the mask. It is sitting underneath there. The next section has an H&H &H dressing. Now the H&H &H dressing is very interesting because it looks like this tiny little square. But you would be absolutely shocked. If you open this up, which I have done many, many times, it turns into this giant pile of gauze. What better to stop bleeding than a gloved hand and a wad of gauze? Bam! Compression. 80 to 90 percent of bleeding stops with compression. So remember, gloved hand, gauze. It's got some nice uh, little indentations right here. You can see where to rip it open and pretty much once you open that and grab it out, psh, that gauze expands. So that's right in this next pocket here. Uh, right next to that is adhesive tape. Now, you say adhesive tape, this is latex free. Hypoallergenic. You don't have to worry about somebody with latex allergies with this tape. And this would be obviously something you would be doing after you've stopped the bleeding, you wanted to dress the wound, if you were transporting the patient to a hospital, you can use this tape, you can use the uh, dressings that we have in here that are sterile, and you don't have to worry about giving the patient some uh, allergic reaction. Now, next you will find an Israeli bandage or an emergency bandage. This is a really cool item. When you open this up, this has a pad, it is in a sterile package. In fact, this one was made in 2014 and doesn't expire. And we all know pretty much about gauze in sterile packages expiring. If it's intact, it's gonna be fine for a very long time. <clears throat> but this one says uh, 2022. So don't have to worry about this expiring in your bag for very long. Now, you take this you open it up, it does have a double package to open up, which is great because you definitely guarantee sterility if you're getting into two packages. You have a pad, you have an elastic wrap, you have a pressure clip, and this will create not a tourniquet, but it will create a certain amount of pressure if it's wrapped properly over the wound. Now you're not gonna wanna do this until after you've stopped the bleeding. 
But if you've stopped the bleeding and you're worried about it starting again, putting a pressure dressing on it will kind of help guarantee that it probably won't start again. So that is excellent for dressing a wound after you are finished with the bleeding. The next thing you'll find in here is a um, number 10 scalpel. Now this can be used to um, make a hole for your decompression needle. These are specialized pieces of equipment. You need to know what you're doing. You need to know how many ribs you're going down, where you're going in between, the exact alignment of where you'll be puncturing this. This is not something that a layman or someone who is not medically trained uh, should be attempting. So if you've got the training, you've got the equipment, perhaps there's someone around you that does have that training. And so you can say, here, I have what you need. So that's why this is in here. So what's next in our bag? We have right behind the decompression needle and the scalpel, our cat tourniquet. Now the cat tourniquet is important because this is what's gonna stop the bleeding. This is your measure after you have used your glove hand and some gauze, that didn't work, you're gonna have to move to the tourniquet. It's not something you're gonna choose easily, it could damage somebody's body, you have to be careful about it, but you have to put it above the wound. Obviously not over the wound, that can damage it. But this is an excellent tourniquet, combat application tourniquet. You have one in here, and don't worry about the expiration dates on, on the tourniquets. There's no such thing. Next to the tourniquet, you have the roller gauze. These are sterile, they can be used to pack a wound, they can be used for the compression, they can be used after you're done to actually dress a wound. So you have lots of gauze in here. Behind that, you've now got your Celox A. Now Celox A, there's a lot of different hemostatics on the market. That's great, but I like this one because it actually coagulates heparinized blood. Everybody's on aspirin, Coumadin, heparin, Every day you're finding new issues why people need to take anticoagulants. So, you never know. This one will work despite that. It also works in hypothermic conditions. If it's really, really cold outside, some of the other hemostatic products might not work as well. It works for severe and moderate bleeding. Watch videos on, cell, on Cellox, Cellox products like gauze and granules and you will see how amazing they are. The reason I charge the granules is because you don't know whether your injury that you're gonna be treating is gonna be this tiny or this big. It could be either of them. This is a syringe. It has instructions on the back. You take the plunger, you put it on top of the syringe, you're going to inject it into the wound. If you have a wound that's this deep, imagine trying to pack gauze into there with one finger, let's say it's one finger wide, pack it and pack it and you're trying to push it in and push it in and push it in. If it doesn't get where the bleeding vessel is, it's useless. This can go deeply into a wound. So this is why I like the Celex A. Don't worry about the product description. Uh, there was a time very recently that I had trouble getting Celex A. They weren't sending it to this country. Now they are, I've got plenty of these. They will be in every one of these kits. Behind there is a double chest seal. Now why two? Well, if you've got a bullet hole that went in, or a stab wound, in and out the other side, you need two. These are vented. Now you can make a chest seal from a plastic bag, and this would have two. You'd have to cut this in half. You put one in the front, one in the back, and you would tape it with three sides adhesive tape. You have instructions, you haven't done this before, you're not sure what to do, or you just forgot. You had great training, but everything left your head, and you're, ah, what do I do? Flip it over. Four easy instructions. One of the first, wipe the area. You've got gauze. If it is ooey gooey from blood, this isn't going to stick so well. So you need to dry it. Don't wipe it with alcohol or betadine wipes. Yes, you're cleaning the area, but it's not about cleaning. It's about having good adhesion. So you need to dry it. 
So use some of this gauze if there is blood or something else around there. Clean it up, put the one side on. If you've got an exit wound, use the second one. They're both the same exact chest seal. It's not one and one, okay? Works either way. And both of them have instructions. Fantastic. And these don't expire until June 2019. And they were just produced in June 2014. Um, but they're in a sterile package, so you don't have to worry about it. So this is what is in this gunshot wound kit. Again, it's got mollies. It's very lightweight. You've got your card for documentation to attach to the patient or just for your own. It zips up very nicely. You've got your instruments so you can get to that patient right away. You can start doing CPR right away. Maybe you can see that blood vessel. You can clamp it. Your gloves, first thing you see, okay? This is an awesome bag. I hope you will check it out at store.doomandbloom.net. Again, this is Nurse Amy, also known as Nurse, excuse me, Amy Alton, ARNP, Advanced Registered Nurse Practitioner. Check out our articles at doomandbloom.net. Our Facebook group is Survival Medicine, Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy. We also have Twitter at Prepper Show. We have a podcast on Saturdays on blog talk forward slash survival medicine. And we're going to start doing video casts on aroundthecabin.com. And you can join us there. We're going to start uh, Wednesday, December 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to start doing them every two weeks. And you can chat. You can ask us questions live on a video podcast so we can interact with you and chat. And uh, like I said, we're going to start off a couple times a month. Please check out this gunshot kit. Also good for any kind of stab wounds. You will possibly find this to be your lifesaver. And this is Nurse Amy. Thanks for joining me. See you soon. Bye-bye.